Number 31 is uh, the misconception that halakha doesn't change. A lot of people think that the laws in Judaism never change, they're always the same, they're static. Uh, this can be further away from the truth. What people get mis, um, you know, um, confused by is that, yes, there are 613 commandments. Those 613 commandments are written in the Torah, and those will always stay the same. But it doesn't mean that our Judaism will always look the way it is, and we have seen throughout the generation how people, uh, Jews, have been different, uh, have different traditions in different places, even um, in their ways they do the commandments different. And that's where really the point is. We all have a system, a, a code, that is given that that doesn't change and this is the foundation but god didn't want us to be robots if god wants us us to know every other that nothing changes then he will give, give us a book with everything we have to do and we wouldn't need rabbis and we need to figure out anything we'll just follow by the letter of the law black and white everything will be um you just open the book you know you know what to do at every step of the way God didn't want that because there's no humanity if that's there's no individuality, there's no creativity, there's no point of living. You're just a robot. That's what angels do all day. He could have put us with the angel and we just follow what God says and that's it. But God wants us, us to have our own um, connection with him. And that's why he tried, created the old tradition. And the old tradition has room in it for the rabbis to... Uh, make certain decisions in law. Um, and God wants us to use our creativity. Now, obviously, you cannot just invent any law you want like that and you, because you're going to end up with a different Judaism uh, that is not going to be called Judaism anymore. Uh, the rule is you cannot change the 613 commandments, but as you go through through exile, you have the ability to add certain um, uh, barriers or makes certain uh, little changes in order for us to be able to continue to survive and be spiritual throughout the ages. So um, every laws that come from a rabbi, um, a healthy, holy um, a rabbi who is, um, you know, recognized to be a real rabbi, can choose certain new laws that weren't, weren't there and add it up to the Torah. And other rabbis in another country or a different generation may say that this law doesn't apply anymore. But this doesn't touch the 613 commandments. So the, the, the law itself, the oral tradition, changes. There are changes all the time. This is a very good um, uh, anecdote, a marshal. Uh, uh, metaphor it given by it's not just a metaphor it's it's a very real lesson that Rav Noach Rabbi Avram Tversky um, he lived uh, very long uh, says in one of his classes about um, they had a question Noach who was there at the flood right and he when the flood finished he went out of the ark and he uh, planted a tree and uh, vineyards and wine came out of it, grape, and he drank and he got, he got drunk. Now, this is very strange. We're speaking about a tzaddik. A tzaddik, a righteous person, a just, is, does something only, all, he knows exactly what to do in order to, in order to do the right thing. So how can he get drunk? He should have known not to get drunk. It's like that. Before, in the generation... Uh, before the flood, a person will drink, Noah will drink this amount of, of uh, wine, and he'll know, this is the amount I need, I won't get drunk with that. What happened, there was a flood, and then there was a generation after the flood, and he came in a new earth, everything changed, it was a new generation, and now he took exactly the same amount of wine that he would have taken before, and that was his mistake, because that same amount maybe in quantity look the same, in quality had become much more physical, much more um, heavy, much, much, much deeper. It had changed. The, the qualities had changed uh, and he became drunk from the same amount. So this teaches a tremendous lesson is that every generation 
has different difficulties, different tendencies, different challenges. And if we stay the same Jews and we don't find the laws, the halakha, halakha, which means walking, it walks with us, the Torah works with us and wants us to figure out on our own how to come close to God, how to survive. That's our room for creativity, for the rabbis to, 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 to find out how can we reach the level of closeness to God even in the most darkest physical world. Um, we need to be flexible uh, and, and learn to change laws accordingly in the right way. Um, uh, it actually, it's a re one of the reasons that, uh, according to Al-Akhad, the, the way we write a, um, a Torah scroll, it has to be done, it can be done with a pen or anything, it has to be done with a, f a, a feather or some, uh, something very flexible, um, because the laws of Torah have to be flexible, meaning uh, it has to be done with, with love, the purpose to come close to God. And when we decide halakha, when we decide to, to, to put a new law, we have to be able to sometimes bend it and in order for the Jews to be, or the, the world to be able to survive and, um, and, and, and to continue doing the 613 commandments from the Torah, uh, but in a way that is productive and constructive. So um, uh, this should give a bit of a hint. Uh, obviously, we are clear we cannot, halacha cannot change what's written in the Torah, but it can add up and, and, and beautify. And um, even certain things were changed. Originally, we're not supposed, for example, to uh, write. Um, any, the oral tradition was never supposed to be written, and therefore technically all the books of the Talmud should be burned, because we're not supposed to, to, write, to, to, to write down. But the rabbi saw that the exile was coming, there was the end of, uh, uh, of our Jewish tradition if we don't write it down, and all the rabbis agreed that there was actually a tradition from Moshe and Mount Sinai that you able to, you will be able in, in order to survive that's why it says that you should the mitzvot for bahem. You should stop the laws of the mitzvot in order for survival. Um, and and we have now all our oral tradition written. Same thing on Shabbat. Shabbat, you're allowed to stop doing Shabbat in order to save a life. So uh, we have to understand that people think it's all black and white. All that really, there's a lot of gray areas, and that's uh, in order for us to bring the Torah to a level that is more beautiful and um, to learn to be partner with God. God didn't want to complete the whole Torah, so to speak, and therefore he gave us the oral tradition, it's not just in heaven, that we have a part of Torah that is ours and that completes Hashem's Torah and it's a partnership. We are writing a book together and, and, um, and this book will be the whole history uh, the book of law will be the whole history of our relationship between us and God. It's like uh, laws of marriage. It's something you that you do, you don't. And then throughout marriage, you learn to bend certain things, to be more lenient in certain things, more stringent in certain things in order for the marriage to become better. Um, and um, yeah, so this is very important. And um, obviously, sometimes it's misused and abused. And we end up with all the branches uh, of, of, of Judaism that transform and take away things that should not be taken away, like the six, from the 613 commandments, because they say, oh, you, the rabbis can change the law, so let's change everything. The problem is that there is a law given by God that says the Torah is unchanging, and therefore, the, you know, there is a certain limit, limitation in terms of how much you can change.